How to add a keyframe to a material parameter collection in the level sequence with C++ in Unreal. And actually, even though this type of track is pretty similar to all the other ones, uh, there's still a few little differences here and there. So we're going to cover them and also we're going to look how to add both types of keyframes. So either a float or a color. So let's get to it. So as usual, here we are in a completely empty header file except the function that we're going to create today and also two little forward declaration right here at the top because we're going to do a little something different. Instead of providing the path of the level sequence and the material parameter collection, I just decided to provide them directly. So we can feed the U level sequence that we want to modify and also the U material parameter collection that we want to use inside the function directly at the beginning right here as input. So in the add MPC keyframe function, which is the function we're going to code today, we're going to feed a few parameters the first one is going to be the level sequence in which we want to add the material parameter collection track and then the material parameter collection that we want to use the collection that we have right here then for the other parameters we have the frame so where we want to place the keyframe in the level sequence the name of the parameter we want to modify either if it's a float or a color we're going to need both those values and in my case since I didn't want to code two functions just to be able to set either a float or a color I just provided both values right here in the same function so we have the float right here for the float value and the linear color for the color value and then we have a little boolean right here that is going to let us decide if we want to apply the float value or the color value to the parameter here we go so that's it for the definition of the function now it's time to jump in the cpp and as usual we're going to start with the includes and we have a bunch today actually not that many so we have the level sequence movie scene and movie scene section as usual because we want to modify the movie scene and then we have the track we want to add so the movie scene material parameter collection track so that's a long name and we need it and then we have the material parameter collection that we want to use so material parameter collection right here these are in three different modules so we have the level sequence movie scene movie scene track oh and actually the engine module also so we're going to make sure that all those four modules are inside the build.cs file so let's go back in there we have the engine right here we have the level sequence movie scene and movie scene tracks perfect we have all the different modules that we need if you don't have them obviously just add them otherwise it's not going to compile it perfect let's go back in the cpp and it's time to code our little function and actually it's going to be a pretty big one so the first step to add a keyframe in the level sequence is going to be to make sure that the level sequence we receive as input is valid and also we're going to do the same thing for the collection because otherwise we can't really add a valid track inside the level sequence if the collection doesn't make sense so we're going to check if the level sequence is valid otherwise if it's not valid we're just going to return right away same thing for the material parameter collection if the material parameter collection is not valid we're also going to return because well we cannot add a keyframe in those cases and then now that we know that all the inputs are valid it's time to see if we want to create a new track or we can simply reuse a track that is already inside the level sequence because if you already created a track for your material parameter collection you can simply reuse it you don't want to create a new track every time so that's what we're going to do right here i'm going to get all the different tracks that are inside the movie scene so movie scene get tracks that's going to give me a list of tracks and then i'm going to loop through all those tracks to try to see if there's a, already a track inside the level sequence that matches the material parameter collection i receive as input and then i'm going to set that inside my mp PC track that I have right here. So looping through all the tracks, I'm going to cast it to a MPC track actually a movie scene parameter collection track right here trying to see if it's the right class first of all so if it is the right class right here so if the mpct is not equal to null it means that it is really a movie scene parameter collection track and if it's the case well i'm also going to check if the collection matches the collection i receive as input so if the mpc inside my track is the same as the collection i receive as input it means that well the track uses the right collection so we can continue using that track we don't need to create a new one because there's only the one for that collection so i'm going to set my mpc track variable using the mpct that we have right here and we can break out of the loop because we already found the material parameter collection inside the level sequence and we can simply use it so good we found the material parameter collection track but that's actually just if the track was already there otherwise we're going to create it ourselves so if the mpc track is still equal to null after looping through all the tracks and didn't find anything we're just going to create it ourselves so inside the movie scene we can do a add track to add a new track of type u movie scene material our collection track that's going to create a new track for us and once we have the track then we just have to set a few extra parameters right here so first the material parameter collection that we want the track to use and obviously it's going to be the collection that we receive as input uh, because that's the collection we want to use and then we are going to name our track so set the display name of our track using the name of the collection that's actually the same behavior as we have in the editor when we add a new track inside the level sequence when we add a new material parameter collection track in there it's going to name it using the name of the collection so i'm just replicating 
changing that behavior and I'm simply naming my track using the same name as the material parameter collection. Good. So either we found the track that we wanted to use or we created a new track to use and add a keyframe to it. But in both cases, it means that we have a valid MPC track and now it's time to add a keyframe onto it. So I'm just going to scroll, 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 all the way at the bottom because now we have a few more steps to be able to add a keyframe onto that track. And the next step is actually to make sure that the section exists because we cannot add a keyframe onto a track without a section. So here I'm just going to create an empty variable right here that I'm going to set using the sections that are already on the track. So on the track, I'm getting all the sections. And if I have more than zero section on my track, I'm just going to use the first section that is on my track to set my variable. And that's going to mean that the section is already created on my track. And that's it. We're ready to add our keyframe. But if the section is not already there, we're actually going to create it to get the track ready to be able to add the keyframe. So here I'm going to create my new section right here. So the MPC track, I'm going to ask it to create a new section. Then I'm going to set the range of my section. That one, you can do whatever you want with it. You can set it as long or as short as you want. In my case, I'm just going to set it to all the keyframes just to keep it simple. So my section is going to be pretty much infinite. It's going to go from infinite in one direction all the way to the infinite in the other direction. But in your case, if you want to keep it, let's say, between the frame 100 and 500, you can set the section between those frames if you want to. In my case, I'm keeping it simple, so it's going to be infinite. And then once we created the section and set the range of the section, we can finally add it onto the track. So MPC track, add a new section, and that's the section that we're going to add on the track. And that's it. Now the section has the track onto it, and it's time to add the keyframe. And to be able to add a keyframe, well, we need to have access to the amount of ticks there are per frame in the level sequence at the moment. So using the tick resolution and the display rate, we're going to divide them together to calculate the ticks per frame. And once we have that value, we can simply multiply it by the frame number that we receive as input to calculate the frame number where we want to place the keyframe in the level sequence. And now that we have that frame number, we can finally create the keyframe for real. So if we wanted to create a color keyframe, we're simply going to ask the track to create a new parameter key. So add a new parameter key right here. The name of the parameter is obviously the name that we receive as input. The frame number is the one that we just calculated. And then the value we want to apply to that keyframe is the color value we receive as input because we wanted to add a color key. So that was to add a color keyframe. But if instead you wanted to add a scalar parameter frame, well, it's pretty much the same thing. You just have to ask the MPC track to add a scalar parameter key this time. The parameter name is going to obviously be the same, the frame number the same. But instead of feeding it the color value, you just have to feed it the float value that you receive as input. And that's it. Now the track should have a keyframe onto it. We just have to refresh the level sequence. So I'm just going to call the modify function on both the track and the section. So it's going to refresh both of those. And that's it. Now we can say to the user that it was a success. And now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. Here we go. So here I am in Unreal in a relatively empty level with a completely empty level sequence that I have right here. So that's my world and that's my level sequence. And I also have, as usual, a little user interface that is going to let us call our new function that we created today. The new function is going to add keyframes inside the level sequence that are going to control the material parameter collection that I have right here. So that's my material parameter collection, which is used inside this material right here, which is applied on the helmet of my water right here. So if we take a look at the material parameter collection, I just have two parameters in there. I have my float and my color. And you can see that the values are the same as my user interface right now. So they are set to zero by default for my float and one for my color in all the RGB and alpha channel. And these parameters are used inside the material that is applied to the warrior. So my color is going to control the color of my helmet and also the alpha of my helmet. So the opacity mask right here. And the float is simply going to control the metallic of my helmet. So you can make the helmet a little bit more metallic or not, depending on that float right here. And we're going to control those values using the user interface that we have right here. So at the top, we have the frame number where we want to place the keyframe in the level sequence, then the name of the parameter we want to modify. So in my case, I'm going to modify the parameter my float, which is the same name that I have inside the material parameter collection, obviously. And then we have the value that we want to apply to that float. And that's going to apply this value to the float when we click on the add float key button right here. And same thing for the color. So we have the name of the color parameter, which is my color, which is the same name that I have inside the material parameter collection once again. And for the value, we have all those pin boxes right here for the R G B and A of my color, obviously. And when I click on the button, it's going to add a keyframe to my color parameter inside my material parameter collection. And now if I go see the graph, we can see that it's super simple. I'm simply calling the add MPC keyframe function. The level sequence is the level sequence that I showed you at the beginning right here. I selected right there. And then same thing for the material parameter collection. I'm simply using that one right here. And then we have the frame number coming from the spin box. Same thing for the name coming from the two text fields that are inside my user interface. The float value that is coming from the spin box from the user interface and same thing for all the spin boxes that are controlling the color of the keyframe we want to create. And all that is based on that little color
color boolean right here that I just created right there based on if I click on the add float key button or add color key button. So that's just deciding if I want to create a color key or a float key inside my level sequence. And I'm also feeding that variable to my function right here. So good, let's go see if it works. So right now I don't have anything in my level sequence. So let's try to add a float key. Okay, it created a track. So my MPC track right here. And inside that I have a section containing one key for my float and it seems to work. And we can do the same thing for the color. So I'm just going to add a new keyframe for my color. And here we go, we can see that it applied all the right values to all the different channels of my color. So good, it seemed to work. It didn't change anything because they are the same as the default colors that were already set inside the material parameter collection. So let's see if I try to change my float. So I'm going to set it to, let's say, fully metallic. And I'm going to create my keyframe to, let's say, the frame 26, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And now if I scrub, I can see that my helmet is becoming a little bit more metallic. That's good, it seemed to work. And then I can make it back to not metallic. Let's say at frame 73, here we go, it's less metallic. And at the end, let's say at the end of my level sequence, it could be completely non-metallic. Here we go. So now my helmet is becoming less and more and less metallic depending where I am in the level sequence. That's good, that seemed to work. And then for the color, now it's boring, it's all white. So let's change the color a little bit. So let's say make it bluish around the frame 32. So I'm going to add a color right here and we can see that, yeah, we go my helmet is becoming blue that's pretty cool and now we can control the opacity of my helmet so let's say make it disappear around the frame 50 oops wrong keyframe here we go so now my helmet is disappearing here we go and then after that i can let's say go to the frame i don't know 87 change the color once again make it somewhat visible here we go and now added a new keyframe here we go we can see that my helmet reappears and now it's pink and we can change the color one more time if we want to around the end of this level sequence i can make it fully visible and now if i press play we can see that everything seems to work my helmet is becoming either more or less metallic and more or less visible and changes color and everything so good i guess that's gonna be it for today's video and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye